You are listening to episode 54, I Made Less Than Last Year and That's More Than Okay, with guest, Kayla. Welcome to the Ease of Hustle. I'm Lauren Cash. I'm a master certified coach, calendar queen, and multiple six-figure digital business owner. I adore helping you create goals your mind never thought were an option by blending together spirituality, mindset coaching, minimalism, and psychology. If you're looking to go from exhausted busyness to easeful goal creatress, this podcast was meant for you. Thanks for being here. Now let's get to the show. Hey everyone, we're about to dive into the very long guest episode I had with Kayla. I hope you really enjoy it. I talk about it in the beginning that I had an idea for an episode talking about how I made less than last year, but I realized I really wanted to have my new friend, newer friend, Kayla on to talk more about sort of the pressure in the coaching industry, what we've been seeing and our experiences with creating money in our online businesses. So I really hope you enjoy the conversation. Let's get to it. Hi. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. We have a guest on the podcast today and we have Kayla. Kayla and I are in SSCC together. That's Eden Carpenter's Human Design and Gene Keys certification. We were in the rendition of it that had three levels that we automatically signed up for and have been doing basically all year long. It feels like it's been all year long. And only recently, like we kind of connected in the beginning-ish, like had some touch points, but probably in the last month, Kayla and I have really connected and have been hanging out on Zoom and talking to each other pretty much every day, <laughs> going steady. And as I was telling her about the idea for this podcast episode, I realized that I really wanted to have her on the podcast to have a two-way conversation about what we're going to talk about because we've been talking about the coaching industry like around a lot of these things and I thought it would be so much more valuable for you to hear a conversation than me just like kind of talking at you about some of the realizations I've been having and then also you'll be able to get a generator's perspective on things, not just a projector's perspective on things. And two similar but very different stories of two coaches in the industry with some thoughts and feelings about everything happening. So I'm going to talk about the reason why I wanted to do this podcast, and then I'm going to have Kayla introduce herself. So the reason I wanted to do this podcast was I keep seeing in the coaching industry, there's just like this norm where you're supposed to, quote unquote, continue to increase your revenue year over year. And not only that, like it's like doubling almost is the minimum. And you'll have to speak to that later, Kayla, if you feel that that's similar or not. And I did not double my revenue this year. And so last year I made 632,000, you know, just gross you know, the revenue. And I really burnt myself out last year. And it was at the end of last year that I discovered my human design and went on this whole journey. And then this year I am, I'll tell you a little bit later where it's at, but it's less than that this year. And I wanted to talk about that and talk about how I'm totally more than okay with that because nobody's talking about that in the industry. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. And Kayla, do you want to introduce yourself? Tell everyone what your human design is, and then a little bit about what you're up to in the present moment in your business too. Yes. I'm so excited to be having this conversation with you. And I'm really honored to be on your podcast channel as well. Cause I think I told you, but I was manifesting to get interviewed on podcast channels. And then you invited me and I was like, yes, you manifested it. Yeah, I totally did. So my name's Kayla and I'm a six, two sacral generator. 
And I'm a spiritual mindset coach, and I've recently pivoted my business more specifically into helping spiritual entrepreneurs really embody their human design and gene keys in their life and in their business. And that's really been my journey the last couple of years. I've just had a lot of trial and error. And it's really this year with Lauren getting into SSCC, getting into human design and gene keys, where I really got that permission slip to just trust my own energy. And so that's ultimately what I'm most passionate about in terms of helping people. So I quit my nine to five in September. And so, you know, we're pushed in November, December right now. It's been a couple months and it didn't, it didn't go how I thought it was going to go, but it's funny because looking back, it's totally perfect. So I'm newly fresh quote air quotes in like being quote full time in my business, but really I've been doing this for like three years. So we can definitely dive into that more in our conversation. So Kayla, will you tell us more about why did you decide to go into entrepreneurship? Did you do it to become a coach in the first place? Like, how did it all start for you? That's one thing that I'm really interested in. And then I don't even know if we've talked about how human design found you. Those are two pieces I'd love to hear first. Yes. So in 2014, I that's when I started my personal growth journey. So I started doing just courses and seminars through Landmark Worldwide. I don't know if you've heard of them, but I did the Landmark Forum. And that's ultimately what gave me my first exposure to coaching. And so over the years, it was actually within a couple of months of doing the Landmark Forum, I was like, oh my God, like what if I can be a coach? And this was something that really, I was like, lit the fuck up. Like I literally remember sitting on my couch in my suite and I was just like, oh yes, like I really want to do this. But then my ego creeped in and was like, you don't have experience, you don't have this. So this was in the spring of 2014 and I was in the midst of finishing my teaching degree. So I have a teaching degree in physical education and French. So I'm like in my sixth year of university because I was like playing rugby during that time I was a varsity athlete. So I was in the university for so long and I finished teaching and I was like, okay, I'm going to go to China for a year and I'm going to teach in China. And, you know, I'm really passionate about fitness, like having this athletic background. So I taught in China for a year and then I moved to Toronto because my boyfriend was there and I started a personal training business. And so this was in 2016 to 2019, we were in Toronto. And while I was, while I was doing my personal training business, I was just, I was continuing to do a lot of the education through Landmark and just like really getting into spirituality and just meditation, all of that. And I think it was January, 2019, when I was like, I want to really dive into coaching. And this is when I started getting into the manifestation, like online coaching space. And I started to notice in personal training that the clients who had a great mindset were the ones who thrived. And so when I initially started my business, I identified specifically as a mindset coach. And then as things evolved, I identified as a spiritual mindset coach, bringing in the energy work. And so I started my business in January, 2019. And, you know, that looked like the simple things of like changing my Instagram handle, like identifying as a mindset coach and, you know, creating programs and attempting to launch and things just like getting really messy and so on. Right. So through that time, kind of fast forward to now, like I did a bunch of different certifications and it was in the summer of 2019, I discovered human design. So somebody on Instagram had said something, oh, I'm a projector and this is how you look up your human design. And I was like, oh, what's this? And then I looked it up and I was like, what the heck is this? Like, I don't, this is not English. I don't understand all these symbols, numbers, the chart, like forget it. Oh, I'm a generator. That's all I know. And then I just kind of left it at that, but it kept showing up. Like, this is such a classic example, right? Like just keep showing up. And so then it was really in December, 2020, right before when Eden mentioned that she was launching the certification program, I was like, I'm going into this. Like I, I just, it was a sacral yes for me. Like I'm into this. And then I signed up in January, 2021 of this year. And then the rest is history. We've been in it now for 10 months. So that's kind of a fast track version of the last seven years. Yeah. Will you also tell us like, what has your experience been around, I guess this is kind of a broad question, but like, what do you perceive the expectations are around revenue and the coaching space? (laughs) And what has some of your like relationships to that been like so far? Oh yeah. So I'm just going to jump right into the numbers because I'm just so transparent so the first year in 2019, I literally made $1,000 in my business. 
the second year, last year, I made 9,000. And this year I made, as of right now, 19,000. So it's like, when I first found manifestation, actually it was through Catherine Zinkina, who's known as Manifestation Babe Online. She was doing a five-day live stream event in January, 2019. And I signed up and this is where I was like so inspired. And I remember her sharing her story. She's like, yeah, I went from 9,000 to 600,000 in a year. And this was a lot of the narrative that I was seeing online. It was like, how fast can you get to six figures? And the faster you do it, the more credible it is. You know what I mean? The more like, the more impressive, the more, the better you are as a coach and the better you are as a business owner. And it's funny because like no one specifically said those things, but that's what my brain made it mean. So then of course, in the last three years, like that's just not my story. And so I really did associate myself with money. And it was like, well, Kayla, you know, you've only made 1000 this year. And then it's like the next year, well, you only made 9000 and you're still working full time in, in your business or in your nine to five. And then this year, it's like I quit my nine to five 75% into the year. So the last quarter, I'm like fully in my business. But I was imagining, oh, I'm going to jump into full time with my coaching business, making six figures and, you know, it being all fine and dandy and all of this, but it was just, it was actually a very different story, but I've obviously fully embraced it because I'm speaking about it. So real, you know, and what has your experience been from like the outside world? Like, yeah, you've talked about Catherine, like from nine K to 600 K in a year or whatever, but I guess what like non self themes have you felt around like the money and what your experience has been versus what you're picking up on and maybe even amplifying in those undefined centers. Yeah, I think so. I only have my G center and my sacral defined. Everything else is undefined or open, which means that I am a great playground for shadows. (laughs) And I think that definitely if I'm looking at like the head and Ajna centers, like those being undefined and open is like, it's like, oh, I need the answers. I need, I need to get the wisdom. I need to figure things out, which kind of led me down this trail of literally in the last three years, completing like 11 certifications. Oh, I'm just going to gain all of this wisdom and spend all this money because the bigger the transaction, the bigger the transformation. Like that was another narrative that came up for me in the, in the industry, right? And having an open heart center specifically, I definitely had to like prove myself oh, I'm going to launch this and there's going to be like 20 bonuses so that people think, wow, like what a great deal. And then I can justify the price or convince people to buy because then they're going to think it's it's worthy, right? And the other thing too is like having that undefined root center, picking up on the pressure, like that pressure to quickly move to the 10K months and, and get into the six figure years or months or whatever launches, like that was just so real. Like I just really did and have felt so much pressure. And I really did associate the more money I make, the better coach I am. But the thing is, I've just really gone to the point of like, okay, money and me being a coach are completely unrelated. Like it's just an exchange. I was thinking about this. I was like, I feel, and I know that I am a fucking great coach. Like when I work with people, I can really help them. Like I believe that now looking at the business side, oh, maybe that's just not my strength of specifically knowing the proper launch strategy or whatever it is to create the income, but it's not the same thing. Like it's, so this identity has really shifted for me and having a lot more freedom and trusting myself, my own journey and and really figuring things out. That's really what I've noticed is like, those are where the shadows are coming up. And so it really has come back to me looking at how can I honor my own journey Like, where's the power in my own story? I didn't have someone like me who shared, oh, it took me this many years to make this much money. Everyone is just bells and whistles. Like, how fast can you do it? So that's really been my experience. Yeah. And I think looking at like my story, for example, can be difficult because people don't see the full transparent story that is my entrepreneurship journey (laughs) because they ask, how long have you been doing Bavarico, which is the name of my current business? And I say, since July, 2019. And they're like, oh my gosh, how did you from July to 2019 to July of 2021 create a million dollars in those two years? Last year, we already said 632. 
And this year is going to be most likely closing around half a million or just there under. Like I'm at 480K currently for the year. So right around under half a million. But that's not my full entrepreneurship story. People don't understand that the last two years is not it. So (laughs) if we go back, I've been studying online business probably since 2010, if not earlier. Like I would really have to go into the archives. I had a blog back then that was all about from the eating disorder community because I was becoming a nutrition therapist to treat eating disorders. And I was doing intuitive eating and intuitive eating coaching. And I attempted to launch private coaching doing that because I was a certified, and I still am, a certified intuitive eating counselor. I had like the Instagram that I was quote unquote trying to do then. I was like going to all these conferences to learn how you do like a blog and market it and grow and make passive income and like listening to Pat Flynn back in the day and like all these things. And I was following all of them. And the way I found actually the life coach school was because I was listening to a podcast called Being Boss back in like 2012 or 13. And Brooke Castillo was on that podcast as a guest of that podcast. And then I found her podcast and I started listening to her. So really then like I tried the online business thing and it, I wasn't making money from it. And then When I graduated with my second master's, finally finished, like sitting for my RD exam, 2017, that year, then after I got my RD, I started building my private practice. In real life, I was still using some online digital stuff, but it was like a hybrid type business. I was starting to finally gain some traction. And you know why, actually, this relates to human design, why it actually was gaining traction in that present moment, (laughs) that private practice, because I was using my fourth line, like hardcore. How funny is that? Like I was going to coffee with people. I was doing like the networking thing. I was like building my relationships and people were referring people to me. And so that's why it was going well. That's so, I love it when people have a four line. Like one of my friends is a love and relationship coach. She's a four one sacral generator. And the four one is like really rare. And for the first five years of her business, she didn't have a website. She didn't have a website. She doesn't market. Like she literally does not market. It's all word of mouth. Every single one of her clients is word of mouth. And I'm like, that's unbelievable. That is a classic four line for sure. It's that community, that network, like that connection, you know, like I love it. It's so fun. And then that same year. So as I'm building the practice, I get to the point that summer where the practice is as full as it can be while I'm working full time at an eating disorder treatment center as their program dietitian, which then I'm like, okay, what do I do? It's always been my dream to be a full-time entrepreneur and to have a private practice. So then I was like, okay, I'm going to have to find something else to help bring in some money as I continue to grow the practice, but it doesn't make sense for me to be 30 hours a week at the eating disorder treatment center anymore. And then right at that time, the life coach school sent out this email that they were looking for someone to do customer support for them. And it would be $25 an hour, plus you would get scholars included if you were working for them. And I was paying for scholars at the time. So those two things together were actually, and minus the commute, actually, I was going to be making more doing that and could do it from anywhere flexibly with my own schedule than I would have if I were still working at the eating disorder treatment center, which is crazy. Can we just like side note about dietetics and how underpaid it is. Master's degree level, RD certification, earning less than somebody doing customer support online. Like what? (laughs) Makes no sense. Okay. So anyway, after that little side note, so then I start going to work for the life coach school and I'm doing both for a while. And I do both for a while. 
And then eventually I decided to close my private practice when I was executive director at the school. And then after that, when I decided I wanted to go back on my own again, that was July, 2019. But if you don't know all the backstory and how long I've been studying online business and not to mention working for the school, which is an online business, and I learned a ton from them, then you would be like, oh my gosh, Lauren just all of a sudden made multiple six figures her first year in business. You know how you could like really spin that in a terrible way, <laughs> like oh yeah, misleading way. Oh yeah. And it's funny because I'm going to, I'm sharing about this in one of my Instagram posts, how when I got this remote role before I quit in September, I worked, I worked for this company for a year and a half. I'm still doing contract work, but it's something different now. I was a contractor. So I had to register my business. And so I was claiming all of this income under my business, my coaching stuff and my contract work. And I was like, Oh, like I looked, I think it was earlier this year. I was like, okay, like you've hit six figures in your business. Technically you have hit six figures. And I was like, I could be such a little asshole (laughs) and say, I am a six figure business owner and not differentiate between the coaching and the contract work. Right. Like I could easily have that in my Instagram bio. Like I just, but I just didn't want to do that. Like I really wanted to be transparent because my goal is to just to be doing coaching. Like that's where I want all my energy to go. So it's like, I always take that like a grain of salt, you know, and you see that online where it took this long, but then you're like, okay, what's the full picture? Like there's always so much more than what we can share online and like through Instagram posts or podcast episodes, like there's always more. So I really love that we're like, we're backtracking like decades here (laughs) for real. And I worked for my dad, who's an entrepreneur. And like, I mean, yeah, we just, you don't know the full story, but I think for you, like in your self-concept, self-identity though, you are a six figure business owner. It doesn't matter which one it comes from, but it's just the misleading marketing. If you were to use that for coaching, that that's, dishonest. So what has changed for you from last year to this year? Energetically, even the way you think about money and making money in your business? Yeah. I think that last year and really since the beginning, when I came into the coaching industry and I came into the online space, I didn't know it until now that I have more awareness that there's a lot of noise. And it's not necessarily, it's not malicious or intentional, but if you were to literally create a metaphor to describe what it's like to come onto the online space and start a business, it's like walking into a house where there's a house party and you don't know anyone, but everyone has something to say. They've each got their own style of clothes that they're wearing, their own drink. And maybe they want you to like join them in their own little party and in their own little conversation. And they're like, so convinced that what they're doing is like the shit. (laughs) And Uh so... (laughs) You know, that's what it was like. I came in and I was like, oh my God. Okay. So if I'm going to be, for example, like Catherine Zinkina and go from 9,000 to like 600K in a year, then, oh, I'm just going to do what she's doing. Right. Like, oh, it worked for her. Like she has this evidence. Right. And so that's what I really realized was that for the first few years of my business is that the effort was huge. Like it really was, but it wasn't aligned because I was trying to implement what other people were doing who were successful in their business. And what it really came down to was that I didn't have self-trust. I didn't trust that if I did things my own way, that I could create my own journey and my own story because there wasn't any evidence yet. Right. So that's the thing is like, as a human being, we're so human and how we want to find evidence to support and just really deal with the fears that come up. Like it's so, it's so genuine. Right. But what I really noticed over the last couple of years is like, I started to see these patterns and I started to see a lot of shoulds needs. And then a lot of the accounts that come up online are like, you know, these Instagram gurus and whatever. And they're like, oh, this is how you get more engagement. This is how you get more follows. This is the hashtags you're supposed to do. This is what time you're supposed to post at like reels, everybody do reels, you know? And I just got so overwhelmed and so sick of it. And I just really decided to, I really asked myself, Kayla, what would it be like if you just honestly did things your own way? And then naturally getting into human design is like, okay, that's like the biggest permission slip that anyone could ever ask for. and that's what it came down to. And then obviously Gene Keys, which I know we're going to get into that more clearly in a little bit, but 
I just really started to take ownership and really leveraging that G center in myself is like very activated. It's directly connected to my sacral. So it's like me really speaking my truth of like my identity, the direction that I'm going in specifically what lights me up is like super in alignment for me. And so I started to notice that and pay attention to it and trust it and coming back to myself. So that's ultimately what got me to where I am right now is like this level of being unfuckwithable, like, okay, you're doing that. That's good for you. I really need to do things my own way because this is my own story. This is my business. I'm not trying to replicate your business. I want my own. So that's really what shifted, I guess, in the last three years, but more specifically in the last few months, to be honest. Yeah, me too, though. I feel like that's one of the main themes for me this last year, but even more so, like you said, the last few months. And I wonder if it is like us starting to integrate and embody our designs, the more we've gone into that and had like time for them to sort of sink in or us to play with them, like in the wild a little bit more. And then obviously we've been also contemplating the gene keys, which we're both so into. Yeah. But yeah, I relate to that so much. And there's so much in my gene keys about that. I feel like we've been uncovering about like, being me, like speaking that and doing things differently than like the status quo, I feel like is a very common theme in a couple of my spheres, which is very fascinating to me. Oh yeah. And honestly, I even feel like I've had conversations with people who aren't like really into human design. They're not aware of their gene keys to contemplate them to the level that we're doing it. And they're noticing this shift in the collective. Like they're noticing this, this exhaustion of being told what to do and how to do it. Mm -hmm. And I think it's like also just because we've been in a pandemic for like two years, you know, like that's all you're being told. Oh, you need to stay home. Oh, you need to get vaccinated. Oh, you need to do this. You know, it's just so much do, do, do that. It makes sense that people are just like throwing their hands in there and they're like, I don't want to do this. (laughs) That makes sense too. Cause also so many people have been like, wait, is this really what I want to do with my life? Like work-wise, it's brought that up. And it's like, wait, is this really where I want to live? There's a lot of like all encompassing, wait, this is my like one life in this lifetime, at least. (laughs) Like, is this the way I want to play with it? Yeah. I think it's, I mean, despite how challenging the last few years have been, for a lot of people and more others than some is like, there's been a lot of gold in there too. It's like, what's really important to you? What really do you want to put your energy into? Like, what do you really value? And I think that that's such a beautiful gift that's been given to us through the pandemic, even just the awakening of people being like, I want to do things my own way. Like we need to have that contrast. You know, it's not like we're trying to rid every negative thing online or whatever, just to have this perfectly awakened world. Like it's not possible. You have to have contrast. Yeah. And what's going to be right for one person is going to be very wrong for another, right? Like you're going to have way more energy for what's lighting you up than I may ever have energy for. And that's beautiful and lovely. And that doesn't mean you're doing it wrong. Yeah. There's a really good quote my friend said to me once, and it's literally it's basically what you said, but there's right for you and there's right for me. And it's like, yes, because then there's no wrong. It's just like, it's just right for you and there's right for me. And I think that that's, I really love that quote. So I just wanted to share it. Yeah. And, and what's right for me right now in this present moment might not be what's right for me in a future present moment, which I think we forget too sometimes. <laughs> oh Yeah. Okay. I know you had some things that you wanted to ask about or chat about. Yes. One of the things that Lauren and I chatted about recently was we were messaging back and forth and I was talking about how women nowadays are really making money a lot quicker than they used to. And I made this comment to her. It was so interesting to like witness my own wounding. I was like, yeah, like women are just making money so much faster. Like they're doing so well, blah, blah, blah. And she goes, they, I was like, yeah, women. And she goes, well, why don't you include yourself in that? And I was like, oh my God, I am isolating myself from abundance. Like this is one being that I'm still associating my success and me being a powerful person with money. And so I know that one of the things that I really wanted to ask Lauren that we talked about this before we hit record was 
when you look at, for example, once you hit a million in that revenue or even like multiple six figures in a year, you know, you see this narrative online of like being an energetic match, being in the energy of money. Like, what was that like for you? Like hitting those multiple six figures and millions? Like, I want to hear your story around that. Yeah, it's funny. So I want to let you all in on like how my mind hears you saying that. And my mind wants to be like, but I didn't hit a million in a year, so it didn't count. And I think that's really the narrative online is the revenue in a year period. And that's what we're counting. (laughs) That's it. That's the only thing that counts. So I'm almost like I did recognize it and posted it and celebrated it on Instagram. And I like took myself out for something to eat and drink, which is what I like to do to celebrate And your line and your pearl of the gene keys is all about like the purpose of money for you, basically. And mine is celebration. So I've really been like honing in on that a lot. And it's been really fun. So anyway, I will say like, it wasn't really much. Like you do hear some people talk about how you're going to be the same person, maybe just with different problems with different commas, like that kind of thing. That's really like how it feels. I feel like, and I will say making more money, like the last probably like three years, because what I was making towards the end of working at the life coach school is probably similar to what my take home pay is last year. And this year, that was another thing I wanted to talk about pin that like take home pay and profitability of a business is probably similar the last three years. And it is a lot nicer than when I was making like 20 K or 30 K a year. I will say like my salary last year and this year that I use like payroll to pay myself is like a hundred K, but obviously like taxes come out of that and probably take home from that is like what, like 80 K. And then I do take some like owner's distributions here and there. So probably around a hundred K, you know, is what I could say the last three years I've been like taking home. And I will say that's a lot nicer than the like 20 or 30 K. And like, I do get to have some luxuries that I really do enjoy in my life, but there's still like highs and lows and emotions and Last year and this year were way more intense probably for me because I've been doing so much of like the inner work though too. Last year was more intense, I will say, probably because it was like more self-inflicted and like just forcing and striving and trying to do things the way you were supposed to and working way too many hours and not being an embodied projector. This year has been more challenging not because of how much I'm working, but because of how much deep inner work I've been doing. And I would much prefer that over the heart of last year. Oh my gosh. Yes. Does that answer your question at all? It does because it just goes to show that, and I've heard this too, like having more money amplifies who you are as a person, you know? Mm -hmm. And like, yeah, the, the, the narrative of having more money means more problems or just like your priorities shift. Like there's there's more responsibility. And I think it's really refreshing what you just shared, how, you know, somebody's like, Oh, I made a million or I made this. It's like, okay, but how much are you actually like taking home? You know, like for example, for me, like, yes, I talked about making 19 K this year. And then if I look at my nine to five pay, for example, that's a lot less. Like I think it's 50, but still that's like 70 K gross, which literally I remember, I think it was three years ago in 2016, I made like $38,000. Like I've already almost doubled it, but it's yeah. it's just still which is insanely amazing. <laughs> yeah. It was funny because actually Lauren was like, Oh yeah, you know, you can talk about how you increased your income this year, and I can talk about how I decreased mine. And I was like, What? And then I forgot that I was looking at both of them combined. I was like, Oh, Kayla, you made less than last year. But then I was like, wait, you doubled your coaching income. Like that is worthy of celebrating, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So we're celebrating because that's like what you're wanting. So yeah, I feel like when we're talking about these like gross revenues, you know, we're not hearing what's your profitability like, like what is the net profit? And this year 
it's like way worse for me. Like I'm pretty much, unless, you know, I'm probably going to bring in a little bit more, probably then I might just be completely even this year, like no actual profit, like the profit and distributions I've been taking this year were from last year. Last year I had like an insanely high profit ability, like to the point where I had paid in my physical body because I wouldn't get any help because I was still acting like I was completely in debt. (laughs) So then I was like in debt physically and like diagnosed with adrenal fatigue and all this stuff because I wouldn't get any help. So now I'm looking forward to like next year of like kind of having a more balanced, maybe (laughs) if it flows, like a more balanced year where energetically I don't have a debt to pay back and the business actually is profitable. That would be really fun. Yeah. You know what? I love that you brought up this conversation about profit because that's definitely something that I don't see people talking about online. And I'll be honest, like right now I've been so intense, like going so deep into my business that I I'm carrying debt again. I was debt-free earlier this year. And then now I've accumulated a debt again, and it's all been investing in myself. And I've definitely changed my relationship to what debt means. You know, like I've heard the narrative, it's a choice to pay things off over time. And the reality is debt is a privilege. Not everyone can acquire debt, right? And it's like, it's such a privilege. And that's, you know, I really just trust that process, but it's like, yeah, I haven't made profit yet in my business. I don't have shame around it because I'm trusting the foundation that I'm building but we don't hear that. People are like, you know, I made 21 million this year. You know, there actually is a coach online who apparently hit 21 million this year. I'm like, that is so much money, you know, but it's like, how much profit are you taking home? Or are you buying like 10 houses a year and like going on like insane vacations and then there's nothing left? Like we just don't know. Right. Or not even that, like the business is eating into a lot of it. Like how many Facebook ads are you paying for, you know? And like, how big of your a team are you having? And like, all of that. And a lot of my money this year, like I was looking at my p and I did have a lot of money go to, I have two line items. I have continuing education slash professional development is one. And then I have business coaching is one. Business coaching is 28K. Continuing education slash professional development is 38K. <laughs> So like, it's kind of like I'm going into quote unquote, not debt, but like I'm using the money from the business. Like the reason why I won't have the profitability is because I'm investing in those things almost is like what we could look at it as. And that's similar. Like you just aren't using like funds inside your business for that. You're buying money and the way that you buy money is paying for it with what we call like interest right? You're just buying the money to use the money ahead of time. And that can be a really great strategy if you're doing it consciously and strategically and like in alignment with your sacral. Yes, it's so true. Actually, one of the things that I want to ask you is one of the other narratives that I've seen online is the bigger the transaction, the bigger the transformation. Uh. And oh my God, the look (laughs) on your face right now, you're like, no. (laughs) (laughs) I would love to hear your insight on that. Well, so what comes to mind for me is, so I paid, what was it? Like 25K at the time for master coach training. I think it was 25K for that. At that time, that was the biggest investment at one time for me. And that was pay in full too. That was like, oh my gosh, like jumping off a cliff because that was October, 2019. I had just started doing my own business again, didn't have a full practice yet, had quit working for the school. And I'm like, I hope there's going to be like, that was a real like leap of faith moment for me, putting that on the Amex. So there was that one. And then there was 20 K for a mastermind that I joined last fall. Then there's 20K for SSCC when we're doing it. I want to say there was one other, like around that, maybe, maybe not. But I will say that I have not created the same level of transformation for myself from each of those equally, that I would say they were all equal to around the same amount of money. And I do believe I create my own transformations. But I don't believe that 
for me, creating the transformation has much to do with the money invested. And I've honestly, like this summer, I did a mastermind that I think I probably had one of the bigger transformations I've ever done. It was a, it was a shorter talk about time too, not just money, like the length, a lot of times too, we say, but this was like a three month one. And I think it was like three K Kayla. And I probably had one of my bigger transformations this summer in that than these like five figure ones. Is that interesting? What do you think about it? I love this, honestly. And I think that, I think for me, like just talking about the relationship of money, I, the other week I decided, I was like, I need to celebrate myself more. And I went into a Google doc and I literally wrote down all of my milestones that I've hit in my business in the last three years. Oh my gosh. I love it. Yeah. Like all the podcast episodes, all the successful launches, even actually just all the launches, even the cricket ones. Like I literally wrote everything out and it was funny because I was like, okay, Kale, so over three years, you've technically made 30 grand. And then I was looking at the amount of effort that I put into it. And I was like, oh my God, like that's actually so painful. Like you really can't say that effort equals money. But what I was going to say was that when I flipped that perspective and I looked and I was like, Kayla, who you've become as a person in the last three years is literally priceless. Like if somebody said, Kayla, you're going to pay a hundred thousand dollars so that you can be the person that you are right now still like, it doesn't feel aligned. It's like a sacral. No, it's like, no, like it's just not money. I don't think equals transformation. It can be a declaration that you are worthy of spending that particular amount of money, but it doesn't mean that your transformation is only accessible when you spend money. Yes. And I think that's this breaking the paradigm that money is related to any of these things. Like it's really outside of all of them. Like even with clients, like I don't believe in it. It's an exchange. Like I believe that the money is coming and flowing from universe, which is also me. Like (laughs) that is coming. There are just a million different ways in which they could come. And sometimes that way is through clients, but it's not like in exchange for the exact whatever the package is or the way the client is thinking it's an exchange for. Cause then it can help us get rid of like this attachment of like time equals money or certain deliverables equal money and all of that, that gets us so like hooked. One of the things that I've noticed is let's say if someone goes into a coaching program and it's like three months and you're going to you're going to start hitting 10 or 20, 30, 40 K months after three months after being in my energy and doing this work. The funny thing is like you get into this container and then there's all this pressure. It's like, okay, I only have three months to hit these goals. And then what happens is we literally get out of alignment because it becomes like a survival factor of like, okay, I need to work really hard. I need to push myself. I only have this much time working with this coach. And it honestly, it just fucks everything up. Like you don't actually get to experience yourself and be with yourself and see what unfolds and build that, that self-trust that I talked about, you know, a little while ago. And I think that that's really important too, is like paying attention to in the coaching industry online. Like when somebody tries to put a timestamp on your transformation, there's always only going to be so much that you can control. And ultimately the biggest thing you can control is your perception. And if you control your perception, you can choose how you perceive yourself and you can decide that in the moment. It doesn't have to take three months. And it might take three years, like me, for example, literally three years to have this like insane revelation and feel liberated without it having to be attached to money. That's one of the problems that I've had and been having with my program, Cultivate Margin. I love the program and so many people have gotten so many amazing results from it, but it's going to be sunsetting probably like the day after you listen to this or the month that you're listening to this. And one of the problems I found is it is a 12 week framework. And I had been marketing as like to create any goal. And that feels no longer aligned for me because people were picking goals from their minds that they were thinking they should do in 12 weeks. And so they're picking it like from their mind, creating all this pressure that they're supposed to create it in 12 weeks when it might not even be the like aligned thing for them. 
And a lot of them have undefined root centers. (laughs) And it's just like not making sense to me. There's just like a lot of coming from an unclean place because they're choosing it with their mind out of a shadow. Usually that's where it's like coming from is some shadow in their chart. They're choosing with their mind, this goal, and then they beat themselves up for 12 weeks for not creating it. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Yes. It's so true. It's like when I think about all the times that I wrote in my journals, like I'm going to hit 10 K this month, I'm going to hit 10 K this month. Looking back, I can totally see that it was me thinking that I would have made it once I hit that number. And that gave me the credibility to be, you know, a successful coach. And honestly, it was just so exhausting. It's so exhausting. And I know that one of the things that we can start talking about right now, if you want to, and I know you will, is Gene Keys. I always want to talk about the Gene Keys. (laughs) I know. Oh my gosh. So one of the things that I've discovered with human design and Gene Keys is that human design is, is amazing because it really, it gives you a framework. Okay. The whole thing is an experiment. Like, let's be honest. You could, two people can read your chart completely differently on the same day or weeks apart. It's so different. And I love that fluidity. And the other thing that I love is like human design is more masculine. It's like, okay, this is your authority. This is your strategy. This is your type. And then you can resonate with that. You might resonate with more parts than others, but gene keys is so much more feminine. It's less framework and it's more contemplating, which is really like, you know, you have your 11 spheres in the golden path of the three sequences. And it's like, you contemplate these spheres and the energy within them, the shadow, the gift in the city. And you can see these patterns in your life. And it just allows for a lot more fluidity. Like there, you can't force a breakthrough in a sphere in three months. Like it's such a beautiful unfolding. So I want to hear Lauren for you, how Gene Keys has essentially shifted your reality. <laughs> I feel like that's part of the trouble with Gene Keys for me too, is like it's such a feminine, non-mental in some ways experience that I almost can't put to words (laughs) really like the experience of it, which sounds so crazy for the poor like listening person right now. (laughs) But I will say I feel like that plus my inner voice work that I'm doing right now is really helping me soften and slow down and become more grounded and become more me, like more permission slips are happening. And I do believe part of it is me embodying being a projector more and more and learning more and more how to do that and more and more deconditioning happening. But I also really feel like it is the contemplating and energetic shifts that have been occurring whilst contemplating that people are responding to. Like I have been getting way more response the last month than I have in a really long time. And I feel like that's partially because of the like contemplating the gene keys and the shift of the energy just from simply accepting, allowing, and embracing a lot of the shadows. (laughs) And sometimes experiencing the gifts in some cities. What about you? Yeah, I think it's funny, the timing of everything. So I was sharing earlier how I quit my full-time contract role in September. And we started diving into the Gene Keys the end of August in SSCC. And so I'd already kind of started doing this work. And it came at such a perfect time because more specifically, my core wound, which is in the Pearl sequence, is gene key 34. And the shadow of this is forcing. And I can tell you right now that in the last three years, I had spent all the time forcing other people's strategies, other people's methods to do things in my business. And it's no wonder that it didn't work. And so when I really realized this and I started contemplating like, wow, Kayla, you've really been forcing things. And there hasn't been this level of trust to just back off and not do anything for a while. And so really in September and November and going into December, there's a lot of slowing down and just learning more about the gene keys and trusting like, it's okay. It's safe for you to live off your savings right now. Like really trust that the right thing for you to respond to as a single generator is going to come. And so it's really interesting because then I started learning about the culture sphere and the shadow of my culture sphere, which is known to block prosperity in life is stress. So the shadow of stress in the culture sphere is 
what I realized, like I've been stressed for three years. I've been stressed about why haven't I hit this? Why haven't I done that? Why don't I have these clients? Why this? Why that? And it's just been a lot of stress. And I was like, that makes so much sense. The gift of the culture sphere is restraint. And restraint means really trusting. Like when I read about the Gene Keys book, it's really about trusting the timing. And it really ties in beautifully with the strength of the core wound, right? And just like having the inner strength to restrain, to not force things. Like I could just see the dance between these two spheres. And I was like, oh my gosh. And then the stillness, which is really what I've noticed in the last few months is just having the stillness, like slowing down, like meditating longer, taking a bath every night before bed, really being with myself and, and slowing down and being still is like, I feel so prosperous and I'm not making tons of money. Like I'm like, wow, it's unrelated. This is what I've been waiting for is completely unrelated. Prosperity comes in so many different ways. And so I think this is what has ultimately really given me the permission to just show up differently and to really share my story unapologetically and confidently because I'm like contemplating this, shifting my way of thinking, activating this in my DNA. And it's it's just so different than doing, 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 right? So it's such a beautiful mix. And then you look at how your human design and contemplate the gene keys and it's just, it's so unique to each person. That's why it's so powerful because it's not, this is what worked for me if you didn't get X, right? So that's that's really what I've noticed. I feel like for my vocation, which is the core wound, same sphere, mine is constriction. And I was like constricting myself with thinking I needed to do things a certain way in the way that everyone else was, kind of like you had the forcing and I had the constriction. And then in my culture, the shadow is superficiality, which like makes so much sense around me, like being constricted, doing things the way I thought people needed, like I had to do them. And then superficiality is like me just like playing the part and like focusing on all the superficially things, like playing the role on all the superficial stuff that comes up in the industry around like the way people dress, the way people like do all of the things online. Like, I feel like that vibe like currently comes through in some of my like website and stuff. And I like, can't wait to like redo some of it so that it's not so like the superficial vibe that currently like I'm seeing now when I am looking at it. Not that that's like where I like meant it to come from when I created it, but I am now feeling like it's less, I want more like down to earth, natural kinds of like vibes now. (laughs) So I'm really looking forward to like crafting that and spending a lot more money on design (laughs) again next year. That's one of the things I like to spend a lot of money on. (laughs) That's so good. But okay. So your culture is the eighth gene key, right? No, my pearl is eighth. Okay. Cause I remember, I think it's the city of your pearl is style, right? Like just yeah. having your voice, like showing up, like, yes. isn't it funny? But ultimately like the way that you access the power of the gene keys is like, you have to trust yourself, you know, like you realize through constriction that you're not trusting yourself and that you have to show up a certain way. And it's like, that's what it all comes down to. It's not about finding the gurus and just replicating what they're doing to create the business that you want. I thought of a really good metaphor the other day. And I was thinking how, you know, in the coaching industry, like when it comes to building a business, what's happening is like, you have your puzzle pieces that are like on a table. They're not together. They're just in a pile, a mess. Okay. And, but you have everything that you need. It's there. But then what happens is we start, oh, I'm going to take a puzzle piece from them. I'm going to take a puzzle piece from them and them. And then you try and build this puzzle and you have like three, four, 10 dozens of different puzzle pieces from different puzzles. Like no wonder they don't fit together. They're not meant to fit together. But when you clear all that out, you give it back and do whatever you need to do. And you're just there with your own puzzle piece and you, you're you still, and you're in your zone. You're going to build your picture. That's where the power is. I love that. And that really speaks to the work that you and I are really lit up or craving and desiring to be doing with our clients now is like, we don't want to be giving people puzzle pieces. We want to be sitting next to you with you as you're looking at your own puzzle pieces and like wanting support and holding 
as you go through that experience of putting together your own puzzle, which is so exciting. It's kind of cute too, right? <laughs> but it's like such a good metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Was there anything else that we wanted to talk about that we haven't talked about yet? So one of the things that I would love to ask you, Lauren, is what are some of your big goals? I mean, goals for lack of a better word, intentions and energy that you are going to cultivate in 2022. That's my reframe from the word goals because we're kind of leaving that realm behind. I know. You know what? This is so fun. My website developer designer asked me this last week, like what's in store in 2022 for your business? Like what's the plan? And it's finally the first year ever that I don't have like, here's how it's going to go and the goals. And I actually am really excited about that. And I've been contemplating a lot goals and how I want to talk about them now. Cause that's been a big, like key thing I coach people on is like goal cultivation. So I have some things that are like starting to bubble and I'm sure will become like Instagram posts and things later on next year, but I'm starting to think about them in a different way. So what I'm looking forward to next year is I know I'm getting a cat. I'm so excited to get a cat. (laughs) I know that I am really looking forward to fully serving and being present. Presence also is the city of my culture with those who are in Cultivate Margin. So if anyone joins Cultivate Margin right now until it sunsets on December 14th, then I'm going to be serving them all the way through the end of March, and then they'll have lifetime access to everything that's in there. But the live aspect of it and the full support ends the end of March. So I'm really looking forward to fully serving them, fully serving my private clients current and the ones that I'm calling in. And then I have two ideas that have been coming through my inner voice. And I am just curious about what the timing will be. So one of them is a private podcast. And that has been coming through from my learning about not doing unpaid work. (laughs) So projectors are here not really to do work in the traditional sense. And we're meant to be here to like lead and guide. And there's like a lot of resting involved and taking care of our energy to be able to do that at the highest level. And I've been doing a lot of generating (laughs) And I use that word on purpose, like generating a lot of content and doing business the way that everyone says to of creating a podcast for free, creating all these opt-ins, like a million different opt-ins and different funnels and like all these things and writing blog posts and tons and tons of email lists and emailing weekly and blah, blah, blah. blah. So I don't want to offer things for free anymore, except for like maybe when I have like an aligned Instagram post, like when that just comes through for me, or when I feel called to show up on stories, like those things are fine. And whatever my inner voice tells me or my spleen tells me, I will follow that. But primarily I want to stop doing free work. I'm like on operation, no more free work. So I really love sharing via this platform through audio. I would really love to share more of the behind the scenes, like almost even like you coming along for like the voice memos of like my days or my weeks when they come through. Cause I have a lot that actually come through in the mornings, but I just like, I make it such a production to create the podcast right now when it's public that I don't feel like I can do that all the time. And the way that I produce it, I was looking at that too. So far this year I've spent or invested like 8K, I think, on the podcast creation. And that's not including like my, if we had dollar per hour, like energy, not including like my energy on it. And I love doing it, but I really want to get help with the compensation for that. And people who really want to listen to me paying for access to my energy, that feels so aligned. And to really change the narrative around the expectation of getting free 
work from everyone always. Like, I think that's what I want to change as well as kind of like shift the culture there. And there's no problem if you feel really called to do it like for free or as like, it's not for free because it's my marketing and it eventually gets paid for with my paid services in the funnel. Like if you feel very aligned and want to do that, I have like no judgment for you at all. Like you do you as we've been talking about. But for me, I no longer feel aligned to doing a like quote unquote free podcast anymore. And I'm so excited to create like a beautiful paid version. So that's actually in a I have figured out that I can do that through Kajabi. And so I'm really excited to play with that and set that up next year. And then the other thing that's been coming through is having a group coaching subscription, but it's not going to be a membership. It's just going to be like, I'll have calls on the calendar, like live coaching calls with me. Maybe I'll still be doing my group hour one planning, like our week's talking about time and stuff. And we end up always talking about like human design, like this last one we had this last week, we were talking all about different (laughs) human design things on that and how that impacts the way you think about time and your calendar and stuff. And then just like, if there are other calls that come through that I want to do that are like coaching calls that are group coaching calls, you'll just have access to those for this monthly amount for the subscription. So I'm really excited to play with that. And I've been curious about when that's going to be birthed, but yeah. And then a bunch of these things that I've been talking about, like cultivate margin, simply one K and then some of my a la carte modules that are currently included in cultivate margin as bonuses, they're going to be sunsetting on December 14th because my inner voice told me to, (laughs) that's basically like the only reason. And I'm starting to not be fully aligned with the way that I taught things then. Not that it's like bad or wrong. So many people have had such amazing successes in it. And now on the live coaching calls inside of it, I can't help but talk about human design and gene keys. So on all the live things now, we're infusing everything about my current thinking. So if you're thinking about joining and you're like afraid that it's going to be like outdated stuff, like don't worry about that. We're totally making it like what I'm aligned with right now on all the live calls and people are like loving that so much. So anyway, that's what's coming next year. I don't have a dollar amount. I do have like a general, like this amount monthly would be great to cover all of the expenses for the business and my life kinds of vibes. And then this would be like a really amazing amount where I would be able to invest as much as I really want to invest and be able to like lifestyle wise, feel very like comfortable doing everything I want to be doing amount. So it's like this range right now. I think it's like from like 18 K a month to like 33 K a month is like the range that I'm like wanting to make. And I almost even love Jason and Caroline Zook from wondering aimfully. They talk about like your enough number And like, once you make that amount in a year, like you don't have to make any more money. Like don't keep working on making more money. Like if it comes to you, amazing, but like, you don't have to keep like then going above and beyond that amount because you've already made it for the year. Like let that be enough and be content with that. And I kind of like that vibe. Like what if I did that where I had like this amount for the year? And then once I make that, I'm just like good for the year. What about you, Kayla? I love everything that you shared, first of all. One of the things that I'm really noticing in the online space is finally, especially from the women that I connect with, is like paying attention to Kayla, how much free shit are you doing? (laughs) Because I (laughs) I have a podcast channel, Living in Fierce Alignment, that I started in March 2019. And as of today, there's 225 episodes. Which is so insane to me. (laughs) And I have an open throat. Like, don't ask me how I did it. But... (laughs) I have edited every single episode, wrote the synopsis for every single episode. Like there is so much free labor in that. And that, but for me, like you said, like that feels aligned. Like that's like the free thing that I can continue doing. And then the Instagram posting, like, and you know this, like I'm, I love posting like carousels with so much information. They're like a little mini ebook. They really are. (laughs) Yeah. And so for me, I've come to the boundary of like, okay, Instagram posts, podcasts, those are my free things. I'm declaring that they are valuable. And one of the things that I'm going to be giving up is like free masterclasses, 
live streams on Instagram for free. Not that I was doing a ton of them, but that is something that is worthy of investing in. Like that is a higher level of exchange, right? So one of the things that's coming up for me, I'm really excited about is from December 14th to the 17th, I'm hosting a four day live stream. This is the last free live stream that I'm doing and it's called mirror mirror. And I'm really just going to be sharing my truth, like expanding more of what I shared today, sharing my whole journey, like what I've invested in, like the smoke and mirrors in the coaching industry that I've dealt with, like, you know, just really being completely honest about my story. And I want to share this. And through that, I'm launching my group coaching program in January called Speak Your Truth. And that's really going to be about helping other spiritual entrepreneurs just embody their truth, like really own where they're at right now, like unapologetically and just having that massive permission slip. So those are some of the things that are coming up for me. And I think next year, what I really just want to focus on is continuing shifting this paradigm that I have around prosperity. And really just shifting the dialogue around what it means to make money and why, like who says that you have to make more and more and more every year. Like it's almost like a coming from a place of scarcity that need to make more. So it's like, yeah, how can I design my life where it just gets to be abundant all the time and it's never, oh, it's not enough. So that's something that I'm really going to be visiting next year. And I just want to continue sharing and being real because like I didn't have the self-leadership that I'm presenting, I didn't really have that guidance. Like that's what I had to discover. That's just the nature of my own journey. So that's something that I want to bring to people is I really want to hold a mirror up to them. Like, Hey, you don't have to do what other people are telling you. Like, what do you want to do? Like, what can you do to cultivate self-trust? Right. So that's really what's lighting me up. So definitely come and sign up for the live stream. We're going to have that link in the show notes, and then I'll have information on that group program. I think it's going to be three months right now. That's what I'm feeling. I will check in with my sacral, but I just want to continue that conversation, speaking your truth, continue that into the new year and just really, really create that community. I'm really excited about it. So that's what's up with me. Oh my gosh. I'm excited with the whole prosperity thing too, and really sinking into that deeper and discovering more and more what that is for me, because the way Richard Rudd describes it is way different than I have like heard prosperity, abundance, like all those kinds of things described anywhere else. And it felt so true, like on a cellular level of being like, yes, this is it. So amazing. Oh my gosh. I just looked down the total for my operating expenses so far this year is $433,550.55. Wow. Me and my aligned numbers. I'm just like, wait, what? (laughs) <laughs> you know what actually one of the things that I wanted to just rope in here is that conversation about Gene Keys and Richard Rudd prosperity just kind of backtrack a little bit because you like totally triggered this thought in my head was one of the big questions that we ask in Gene Keys is how can you be of service to the collective I really noticed that when this question was asked to me like through the conversations with Richard and diving into the Gene Keys and even just looking at my own relationship to prosperity was that there was this like sacrifice aspect like I had to like sacrifice you know my time and like really go all in and burn myself out to be of service to others but now this new conversation on prosperity and like being content and settled and satisfied and in the power of however much money you're making whatever investments or debt you're carrying over like there's just like you said earlier, it's kind of hard to put into words how you experience the Gene Keys. <laughs> mm-hmm. It really is. Yeah. They might be listening to us and be like, these girls are cray cray. And we'll be like, yes. I think they think that. I would think that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, but when you're ready, you'll feel called to it as well and experience it for yourself. And if you are never called to it, that's fine too. Yeah. Kayla, thank you so much for joining me on my podcast. So fun to have you after you had me on yours. Yes. Honestly, I loved our conversation because before we hit record, it was like, this is going to be organic. And I asked Lauren questions as if I was interviewing her and she asked me questions and it was just a very aligned conversation. So I loved it. Yay. And we'll have all the ways to find Kayla and her live stream event in the show notes. And we hope to connect with you on Instagram. The two of us like hanging out in the DMs, chatting with people, not in a creepy way at all. In like a very like transparent, aligned, like we ended up like trading numbers and hanging out online and now are like internet friends kind of way. So if you want to 
connect with us there. I'm sure we both would love it. And yeah, we hope you have an amazing end to your 2021 and that you really come back to yourself for 2022. Okay, you made it. I hope you enjoyed that long conversational podcast with me and Kayla. Thanks so much for listening. If you want more like how to connect with me or how to connect with Kayla, you can go to vivere.co forward slash 54 to get all of the juicy links and info there. And we hope to connect with you soon. Bye.